I just learned about this awesome app called ImageMade. It removes old, unused junk files from your Plex database. I ran it on my Plex library and it removed 7,360 files, almost two gigabytes worth of junk data. So I thought I'd share it with you. There's no template for ImageMade in the Unraid App Store, but it can be set up manually. Let me show you how to do it. Let's get started. In the Docker tab, click Add Container. In the name field, we're gonna call it ImageMade. And for repository, we will set that to M-E-I-S-N-A-T-E 12 forward slash plex dash image dash cleanup. And I'll leave this in the description so you can just copy and paste. The last item in the list here is add another path, port, variable, label, or device. Go ahead and click on that. In the config type, we want to leave that on path. The name, we're going to call this config. And the container path, we are going to do slash config. The host path is going to be slash mnt slash user slash app data slash image made. Then we'll click add. All right, go ahead and click on add another path again. The config type, we're going to leave on path. Name, it's going to be plex. Container path is slash Plex, and the host path is going to be slash mnt slash user slash app data. And then for me, it is bin hex dash plex pass slash again plex space media space server. What we're looking for is we're looking for the metadata folder within your Plex. And if you don't know where yours is at, let me show you how to find it real quick. We're going to browse to the server. So backslash backslash 10.0.0.11 and backslash app data. So it's going to be your server IP slash app data. We're going to look for the Plex container. For me, it's minhex dash Plex. Go in there. And I found the easiest thing to do if you're on Windows, you can just go to the search option and just type in metadata. Then you look at the path and see where it's located. For me, it's the server IP app data binhex Plex Plex Media Server, which is what I put in. If yours is slightly different, just make that adjustment. We don't need that. I'm going to close it and we're going to go ahead and hit add and then apply. And it will download the content and set it up. All right. Once that's done, hit done. And you'll see it's over here on the left now and it says it stopped and if you try to run it it's going to fail and that's to be expected refresh and it's still not running so yep just as i expected we still have to create a file with the environment variables in it so let's do that but before we do that let's check to make sure that the app data folder is there i'm gonna go back to our file explorer and go backslash backslash server ip again and then app data look through the list here and you should have one that says image made and there it is for me all right while we're here let's go ahead and create a file so right click new we're gonna call this a text document we're gonna name this dot e n v and then get rid of the dot txt if you don't see the dot txt on the end of it let me show you how to view that go up to view and the top you'll find a checkbox here that says file name extensions you want to make sure that is selected if it's unselected it's not going to show you the file extensions so let's make sure it's selected then the text part should show up you want to make sure the file is just dot evn and that's it nothing else if you look over to the right it should say evn file if it says txt file then it's still a text file and you're going to need to change that so once that's created go ahead and open it with your favorite text editor and i'll leave a link in the description for all this following information so you can just copy and paste it in. But if for some reason you're having a problem finding it, I'll leave it on the screen here for a moment so you can pause the video and enter the information you need. All right, carrying on. If you look down the list here, you'll see Plex URL. That'll be the URL for your Plex server. So I'm going to edit this information for me, put in the server IP address, 10.0.0.11 colon 34, excuse me, 32400, which is the default port number for Plex. Then it's going to want the Plex token. If you're not familiar with that, let me show you how to find that. If you go to your Docker containers, you open up your Plex server, find any item in your library. It doesn't matter what it is. If you hover over it in the bottom corner, you'll see three dots. You'll see it there, 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 they all have it. So just pick one, click on the dots. The last item in the list is going to be get info. Click onto that. New window pops up. In the bottom corner, you're going to see view XML. Go ahead and click onto that. And the address bar field up here, all the way over on the right, the last little bit is going to say plex token equals, and then it's going to have some information. And the stuff at the end there after the equal sign is what you need. So go ahead and copy that. Go back to your text editor, find the plex token field, and then after the equal sign, it'll get rid of all that information and paste in your token. Once that's done, go ahead and save the file. The next set out of that file. Now we're going to go back to our server. We'll find image made again, click the icon for it, and click start. Have you ever set up a container that was not in the App Store? If so, leave me a comment and let me know what it was. I'm always looking for new stuff. All right, we've given image made a moment to start up. So to make sure it's running, we're going to click onto the image and then go down to logs. In the logs, it'll show you the run commands, which is in that environment file that we created. It'll first make a backup of the database and it'll then scan through your Plex library, looking for any outdated metadata and it'll clean all that information up. This can take a while depending on the size of your system. So just sit back, relax, and let it do its thing. When it does get done, leave me a comment and let me know how much space it saved you. And if you found this video helpful, check out one of these videos next, and I'll see you in the next one.